We're on the record in 14 CR 1432. Mr. Jones does appear in custody. He's represented by Ms. Smith and Mr. Colvin. Mr. Rubenstein and Mr. Waite are both here for the people. And we're outside the presence of our jury. Are there any matters to discuss before I invite our jury in, Mr. Rubenstein? Judge, I just wanted to let the court know something, um, which is uh, Ms. Jones is going to be the first one to testify this morning. We do anticipate recalling her. We have her scheduled for Thursday afternoon, although she's our second to last witness, and so it's certainly possible that that won't be until Friday morning. Uh, but after that, we will not object to her remaining in the courtroom, provided the defense isn't going to go into any new topics with her when they call her. So I told Mr. Colvin of that. I'm sure he has some, he needs some time to figure that out. But I just wanted to let the court know, since that had been an issue that we had discussed, um, as far as things we do not want her to hear, most of that is occurring this week. Okay, thank you. Mr. Nothing, Col else. Nothing else. Mr. Colvin, anything before I invite the jury in? Um, Judge, I know that uh, this case has been live streamed, or at least I've been told that. Um, I also saw reporters outside of the building yesterday uh, talking into a camera. I frankly didn't see the news, so I don't know for a fact we made the TV. But given that, Judge, I'm asking if we can have our inquiry of the jury as to whether or not they've seen any media coverage of this trial. I'm unaware of any um, reports in the Daily Sentinel today, so I have no request to supplement the record beyond what I've said now. Okay. Any objection, Mr. Rubenstein? No, Your Honor. All right. I'll make that inquiry of our jury when they come into the courtroom. Anything else? No, sir. Not for us. All right. Thank you. I'll go ahead and call for our jury then. Rise for our jury. Good morning. Please be seated, ladies and gentlemen. For the record, our jury has now joined us back in the courtroom. Welcome back, everybody. And we're ready for the people's next witness, Mr. Rubenstein. Judge, did you have an inquiry for them? Oh, I do. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, have any of you been exposed to any media coverage, uh, read anything on the Internet or newspaper, or seen anything? If you have been exposed to any media coverage, please raise your hand for me. All right, thank you for the record. None of our jurors have raised a hand. Mr. Rubenstein, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. People call Elaine Jones to stand. Thank you. Ms. Jones, if you'll just be careful in this black cord that we have stretched across the walkway, and I need to give you an oath before you testify, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm under penalty of perjury the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? All right, thank you. If you can have a seat in the green chair by the microphone, please. And then you can proceed whenever you're ready, Mr. Rubenstein. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Can you please tell the jury your full name and spell your last name? Elaine Jones, J-O-N-E-S. Do you live in Mesa County? I do. Are you married to Lester Ralph Jones? I am. How long have you been married to him? Twelve years. Okay. And is the person we're referring to as, or you're referring to as Lester Ralph Jones, is he in the courtroom today? Yes, he is. Can you describe which table he's at? 
He's at the defense table. And what's he wearing today? A gray suit jacket. I'm sorry? A gray suit jacket. Okay. Looks like he's the only one. That, Your Honor, if the record reflects, <laughs> um, she's identified the defendant. Any objection, Mr. Colburn? No, Judge, thank you. All right. I do find that the witness has identified the defendant, Mr. Do you recall going out of town in June of 2007? I do. And who went out of town with you? My husband. Okay. When, what date was that? I believe it was June 22nd. Where did you go? I went to California. We For, went to California. The two of you went to California? Yes. For what purpose? Um, a memorial service for my grandparents and my father who had just died. And June 22nd was a Friday? Yes. How did you get there? We flew out of Grand Junction. Into what city, do you recall? I think we flew into San Jose, and the, we went to Santa Cruz is where the That's what your ultimate destination was. was. Mm -hmm. And then did you, when did you leave California? We left on the 24th, I believe, on Sunday. Where did you go? I went to, I flew out of California to Atlanta. And what about your husband? He flew back to Grand Junction. And you said that was on that Sunday, the 24th? Yes. D when did you return from Atlanta? Uh, it was June 30th, I believe. And that was the Saturday? Yes. To your knowledge, did your husband remain in the Grand Junction area throughout that time? Yes, he did. Um, when you flew back from Atlanta, where did you fly into? I flew into Grand Junction Airport. Who picked you up? My husband. Do you recall what vehicle he picked you up in? It was the Impala. May I approach, Your Honor? Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Jones, I'm going to show you what's, previous, what's been marked as People's Exhibit 211. And for the record, I've previously shown this to Defense Counsel. Thank you. Is that a photograph of a vehicle, Ms. Jones? Yes, it is. And what vehicle is that? A Chevy Impala. Is that the Chevy Impala that he picked you up in? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, I'd move to admit People's Exhibit 211. Do you have any objection, Mr. Coleman? No objection, Judge. People's 211 is admitted without objection. Thanks. Ms. Jones, what was your husband's work schedule around that time? He usually left about 7.30, I think, in the morning and usually got up around 5 o'clock or so, uh, Monday through Friday, and then he'd go in sometimes on the weekends. Approximately what time would he come home? Come home on the regular? Yeah, from work regular days. Um, we, a lot of times he stopped by the Alano Club, so, and I'd meet him there sometimes, but... Okay. So do you know he about was usually do you know about what time he would get off of work? Five. Okay. So he would leave around seven thirty, you said? Mm-hmm. In the morning. So it was sort of an eight to five work schedule? Pretty much. Sometimes he went in earlier. The week that he was gone, excuse me, the week that you were gone, did you speak to him on the telephone each day? Yes. Do you know how many times a day? Usually twice a day, Approximately. once in the morning and once in the evening. Okay. So when you would speak to him in the morning, would that be before he went to work or while he was at work? Before he went to work. And then what about in the evening? Um, it was usually about, I think, 9 o'clock Atlanta time, so about 7 o'clock here. Okay. Which phone did you use to talk to him? Did I use my yes. cell phone? Okay. And is that the same cell phone you currently have? Yes. What is your cell phone number? 2500122. And that is a 970? Yes. So is it your belief that your cell phone records would show the exact times that you called of, with that phone number? Yes. What number did you call him or did he call you on? Um, sometimes he called from the home phone number, and sometimes he called from his cell phone number. Do you know those numbers? I don't remember them. 
Okay. You said you got home on Saturday, June 30th? Yes. Do you recall what time you got back? It was around 8 o'clock in the evening. And you said he picked you up in the Impala at that time? Yes. Did you, were you with him that evening? Yes. Did either of you go anywhere? Um, we had dinner on the way home. Together? Yes. And then you went back to the house? Yes. What about Sunday? Do you recall Sunday? I do. Went to church in the morning. Did he go with you? No. What time do you go to church? Um, I leave the house around 9. And church is usually from 9.30 to 10.30, quarter till 11. What about after church? What happened? He uh, met me and we went to breakfast. So you would have been gone from about 9 until 10.45 without him? Yes. And then he would met you at church? Yes. Did he, so you guys were in separate cars at that point, but you went together somewhere? Yes. Uh, do you recall where you went? Where we went to eat. Um, I think it was the rock slide. Okay. What about after church? We did some errands. Um, I think we went... I'm trying to think of where we went, uh, True Value maybe, and I think we went to Sam's Club. Um, Do you recall talking to Investigator Robin Martin? Um, yes. An investigator from the Sheriff's Office? Yeah, I don't know their names. Do you recall telling her you went to Orchard Mesa, to Okagawa Farms as well, to buy flowers? That's probably true. Does that sound accurate? Mm -hmm. Um yes or no? Oh, I'm, yes, I can. <laughs> okay, so your last answer is? Yes. Thank you so much. So you stayed with him the rest of the day on Sunday? Yes. Okay, so the only time you were not with him was between 9 and 10.45? Yes. Um, and then what about in the evening? Um, we had dinner and, and then... Uh, did he leave at any point Sunday evening? Yes, he did. What time did he leave? It was around 9 o'clock. How do you know that? Um, I was on the computer. Did you look at the time? I believe I might have. I did, I think, yes. Did he tell you why he was leaving? He uh, had to turn off the lights. He thought he had maybe left them on at the shop where he worked and uh, needed to go and check and make sure the lights were off. What time did he return home? It was around 10 o'clock. Do you recall when you spoke to Investigator Martin, you told her, told her it was between 10 and 10.10? 10? I might have, yes. And was yeah. your memory better back then? Could have been, yes you now understand the importance of that time, right? Yes. And that's because you are aware of what the evidence is in the case. And at the time that you talked to Investigator Martin, you did not know what the importance of that time was, did you? No. It was suspicious. Was it suspicious for you when he left that evening? Yes. Can you explain to the jury why that was suspicious to you? I had suspected him of um, other women, and I thought he was going to meet someone else. So you were paying... Or calling someone else, or... Is it because of that that you were paying attention to his comings and goings more carefully? Yes. When he came home, what happened? Um, I was outside. And he came, came in, and um, we talked for a few minutes, and then he went in and got ready for bed, and I went and watched the news. And he took a shower, didn't he? Before yes, he bed? did. He does every night, or he did. But he did that between the time he came home and the time he went to bed, as opposed to before he left. Yes. 
He always takes a shower before, or he always took a shower before he went to bed. Okay. If I may have just a moment. Yes. Cross-examination. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Sorry. Morning, ma'am. Morning. Um, you haven't been in the courtroom before this morning when you're testifying, is that correct? I haven't. To, 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 for this trial? Oh, no. So for this trial, this is the first time you've been in the courtroom, is that right? Yes. Um, and why is that? Because I'm a witness. Okay. I'm not allowed to be here. And you know the law doesn't allow you to be present when you're a witness in a case, is yes. that correct? Um, would you be present if you could? If I could. Um, would you like to be present in the audience observing? Yes, I would. And you're aware that the Bergfield family is allowed under the law to be present, right? Yes. And it's frustrating for you that you can't be? Yes. Um, so you testified that you flew back to Grand Junction and you were picked up in the Impala, is that correct? Correct. And the Impala was a car that you normally used, is that right? Yes. And you're familiar with it because you normally drove it. I didn't drive it, but but you used did. it a lot. Yes. Okay. You didn't drive it at all. Not very often. <laughs> okay. Did you get driven in it a lot? Yes. All right. Um, the Impala. Uh, you're aware that it had OnStar. Is that correct? Correct. What's OnStar? It's. Um, I think you can locate people. You can call on it. I mean, you can locate your, um, where you are. Okay. GPS, I guess, is what it would be. And that was a uh, capability the car had built into it. And back then, did you pay to keep it up? Yes. Um, until myself and Ms. Smith were involved in this case, had anybody asked you about the OnStar stuff? No. Um, and we've only really been involved in your and Mr. Jones' life for about two years now, is that right? Correct. Long time, but not as long as law enforcement, would you agree? Yes. Law enforcement's been involved in your life since 2007 because of this case. Correct. Um, so really until about 2012, nobody would really talked to you about OnStar and the Impala, is that right? That's correct. It was probably a little after 2012 it, even, is that right? Yes. And we asked you to go look for records related to the OnStar, is that true? Yes, it is. Could you find anything? No. I could find the phone number, that's all. Okay. It's been too long for any kind of billing or anything related to that? Yes. Um, were you excited when you thought maybe we had a way to GPS exactly where that Impala was? Yes. Didn't pan out, though? No. Um, now, you testified that you thought it was suspicious uh, that he was going to turn off the lights. Is that right? Yes. And when you say you thought it was suspicious, for you, it was suspicious because you had had problems with him being unfaithful in your marriage previously. Is that true? I had suspected it, yes. Okay. In 2006, you in fact determined that he was using the cell phone to call other women. Is that right? Yes. It's kind of painful to talk about, isn't it? Yes. I apologize. I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. You know that. I do. Okay. Um, so when you say call other women, specifically he was calling 
prostitution types of services. Is that correct? Yes. And you figured that out how? Um, I got call records from my phone and was looking at the numbers and comparing them to what what was on the phone, names and numbers, and some I didn't recognize, and then I happened to, was looking in the paper one day for pets or something, and happened to see a ad for a, the massage thing, and recognized one of the numbers, okay. a couple of them. So you saw these numbers on the records that didn't look familiar? unrelated, you're looking in the paper for something else, and you see a number that looks familiar, and you check, and that number was the one that was on your cell phone bill. Yes. And that number was for a massage service. Yes. And no, normal non-sexual massages wasn't what it appeared to be advertising. No. Um, and that caused you to dig deeper into the records? A little, yes. Okay. Um, when we asked you to look for the OnStar records, did you find anything that was rele relevant to this case? I found the records that I had printed off. The cell phone records? Yes. Okay. We'll talk about those some more later, okay? Yes. Um, So, finding out about this stuff with your records back in 2006 caused a bunch of problems in your marriage? Yes. Did you stay married to him? Yes. Was there a period of time where you were separated? Yes. In 2007, when you went to California and then you went to Atlanta, were you back together? Yes. You were trying to work it out? Yes. Um, but trust hadn't come back at that point? Not completely, no. So anything that was out of the ordinary was suspicious? Yes. Um, was it suspicious to you that if he'd left the lights on, he needed to turn them off? No. Okay. Um, and you don't know if he had some reason to think the lights had been turned off? Excuse me, I misspoke. On that day, you didn't have any reason to know um, if you had some reason to think that the lights had been left on. Is that correct? Well, he had told me he had been Objection to the shop. Hearsay. Back in that time, did you have anything other than what he had told you? Sorry, there was no. an objection oh, with I'm regard sorry. to hearsay. Do you want to respond to the objection? I wasn't trying to elicit hearsay, Judge. I was trying to reframe the question. So I concede the objection, and I'll rephrase. Right. So the objection is sustained, and the jury is to disregard any part where she said, he said, uh, so you can proceed. Thank you. Sorry, Judge. No worries. Um, I'm not asking you what he said, OK? Sorry. Aside from anything that he may have said, did you have any reason at that time to think that he had a reason to think the lights were left on? I I just know that he went to the shop a lot of times when I went to church, and so that's why I would assume that he had gone there. Okay. So the idea that he'd been to the shop before, that wasn't surprising in any no. way? No. Okay. And the idea of going to turn off the lights, if, if they had been left on, that wasn't suspicious. No. Okay. Um, when he came home, was he acting odd? No. Was his behavior in any way suspicious? No. Um, now, you were suspicious he'd been with another woman, right? Yes. Um, part of being suspicious that he had been with another woman would you have been paying attention if there was any unusual odors around him? Yes. Did you smell gasoline? No. Would that have been noteworthy to you? 
What's that? Would that have been noteworthy to you? Yes. Okay. Um, the showering, was that suspicious in any way? No. In fact, that was very routine, right? Yes. Um, You testified today that you think he got home around 10 o'clock, right? Yes. And you know timing of that arrival home is a giant deal in this case, is that right? Yes. Is that a yes? Yes. Um, and myself and my partner and our investigator, we've talked to you several times, right? Yes. And before we started talking to you in 2012, Law enforcement talked to you a whole bunch, is that right? Some. In 2007, they interviewed you several times, isn't Couple that correct? Couple times, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Every time law enforcement wanted to talk to you, were you cooperative with them? Yes. If they asked for an interview, you gave them one? Yes. Um, when you talked to them, did you realize the significance of the time? No. Um, so were you trying to give them a ballpark because that's what they asked you? Yes. But did you give a lot of detailed thought trying to figure out exactly what time it was back then because you didn't realize the significance? No, I just... Now, they asked you a lot of stuff, is that yes. right? And they interviewed you multiple times. Yes. And every time they interviewed you, they asked you more than one thing, right? Yes. So there was no reason for you to know the significance back then of the time. Is that correct? No. Now, today, we're almost 10 years later, right? Yes. Is there any way for you to prove exactly what time he got home? No. Um, but you do know what your normal patterns of behavior were, right? Yes. You do know what you normally did back then, correct? Yes. In part, because you still do it, right? Most of the time, yes. And you know what I'm talking about. I Watching guess. the news is kind of your thing, right? Mm-hmm. Said a yes? Yes. Um, you watch the news every night unless something unusual is going on. Is that true? Yes. And what part of the news do you normally watch? Just till the weather's over. Okay. Once the weather's over, you're done, and that's when you head off to bed. Yes. Do you usually watch it from the beginning? Yes. And what time does the news start? 10 o'clock. Now, what you know is that after your husband came home that night, when you were suspicious that he'd been with another woman, you went to watch the news. Is that correct? Yes. It would have been unusual for you not to see the beginning of the news. Isn't that true? Yes. In the news, so you think he got home around 10 o'clock, right? Yes. And you think it's possible you got to watch the news later than normal. Is that right? That I maybe got to, can it's, you repeat that? Is it possible you didn't actually see the very beginning of the news on this particular day? It's possible. So could have been after 10 o'clock, right? Yes. But the fact of the matter is that's not normal, right? Correct. And the fact of the matter is what you know for sure is you did watch the news, right? Yes. So you can't say specifically what time it was, but you can say it's more likely it was around 10, maybe a little before when your husband got home that night. Yes. You look confused. Am I mis? Conf am I mis? Am I misconfusing you? That's not. No. Word. Am I confusing you? No. Okay. Um, is anything I'm saying not right? No. Um, yeah, you've testified previously in a different proceeding in this case. Is that correct? Yes. Can I have one second, Jeff? Yes, you may. 
just asked you. You remember testifying in a previous hearing in this case, is that yes. right? Um, and you were asked about this time in that hearing, right? Yes. Now at that time, you were sworn to tell the truth, is that true? Yes. And at that time when you testified, you knew the time was important. It wasn't just ballparking type of stuff, right? Yes. And previously when you testified, you in fact told prosecution you got home around 10 o'clock, right? That or my husband he got, got home. home around 10 yes. o'clock. Which yes. is what you testified to today, right? Yes. Okay. So today's not the first time you've ever said he got home around 10 o'clock, is it? That's correct. And you have explained the fact that you watched the news previously as well, haven't you? Yes. Sorry, do I have one more second? Yes, sir. Thank you. I have no further questions. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Rubenstein, redirect whenever you're ready. Thanks. You're welcome. Ms. Jones, I guess I'm a little confused. Your husband wasn't timing when he was coming home off of the news, right? Timing when he was coming home? Yeah, I mean, there was nothing about when he came home that had anything to do with the news. He just came home. Yes. And you were home. Yes. And could have been watching the news, and he came home. I was outside when he came home. Okay. And then I went in and watched the news. Now, the time that you testified about it being around 10 o'clock, that was just a couple months ago, right? Yes. And again, you were aware well before that of the importance of that time, right? Yes. And the time that you spoke to law enforcement was back in July, I think maybe around July 5th or somewhere in mid-July of 2007, right? Yes. And at that time, you had no idea what the importance was. Yes. You mentioned that your husband had a um, cell phone and that you caught him using his phone to call those numbers that were in the paper. It was my phone number. It was my phone. Okay, so we that was shared a cell phone. You had, you each had your, you shared one cell phone back then and then there was a house phone? Yes. Did anything happen with the phones as a result of that? Um, he went and bought himself a phone, cell phone. And that was a new number that you didn't have access to? Yes. Did he put that in your name or in his name? His name. As a result of that, were you able to access the numbers? No. Did that change? that I was able to access the numbers on his phone? Yes. No. So throughout 2007, you were unable to check the numbers on his phone at all? Yes. Was that frustrating to you? Yes. And so in July of 2007, if he was using his personal phone, you would have had no way to have known if he was using it to call escorts. I looked at his phone and I looked at the numbers on it okay, so that you he had programmed in it. You didn't have access to the bills. I didn't have access to the bills, but did, I... Did he have the bills sent somewhere else? He just had them online, so he didn't print them off. Okay. And so in order to look at the phone, you would have to have essentially stolen his phone and gone through it? Yes, I guess. Okay, so he could keep you from doing that by just keeping you away from his phone? Yes, but he didn't. Meaning? Meaning I looked at his phone quite often okay. to see who he was calling. Okay. All right, thank you. No further questions. Mr. Colvin, other questions for the witness? Oh, thank I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, Mr. Rubenstein. Ms. Jones, in you never confronted him about who was on his on the phone, right? 
because you wanted him to not know that you were doing that. Yes. That's correct. Well, that you no, never that's not true. I did at that time or two. When did you confront him? I don't remember. It was I not. Remember. It was not before this, though, right? What's that? It was not before this. Before this? Before 2000, before June, July of 2007. I believe it was. I you believe confronted that him I about these things before June and July of 2007? Mm-hmm. And you never... I think sorry, I, is your answer yes or yes, no? Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes. And you've never mentioned that to law enforcement at any point no one in ever all of your me. interviews? I guess. You didn't think that was important? I don't know. You're familiar with the phone records in this case being yes. very important? All I, all I looked at was the numbers and the people that were on the phone. And I did ask him a time or two, I believe, about someone that was on the phone, on his phone records. On his phone, where they have the numbers, contacts. How many times? Is what I looked at was the contacts, not... I didn't look at his records, I looked at his contacts. How many times would you say you've been interviewed by law enforcement in this case? I don't know. Um, maybe four or five. And a lot of those were about whether or not he was with escorts, if you knew he was with escorts, things like that? Some of them were, yes. And the, some of them were about phones and your knowledge of which phones he had? Yes. And at no point during any one of those did you think it was important to bring up that prior to this you had confronted him about numbers on his phones? No, I don't re remember when I did it or I just remember I was suspicious so, of them. So it very well may not have been before So this. I may not have just done anything specific. I may have just looked looked and, and talked to him about, you know, calling. Are you calling these numbers or, you know, anymore or that kind of thing? Certainly never told him that you knew about this because of the f looking at his phone, right? Probably not, no. Because you didn't want him to know that that's how you were getting the information? Yes. Okay, thank you. No further questions. Mr. Colburn. Okay, let's break this down a little bit. So you have a single cell phone, and you catch him using it to call people he shouldn't be calling through the bills. Is that right? Yes. That leads to big problems in your marriage, right? Yes. In fact, problems so significant, he's out of the house for a while. Yes. But when you decide to give it another try with him, you let him back in the house. At that point, he goes out and he gets another phone. Is that right? I believe he got the phone before he left. Okay. So now you've got a problem, right? You want to try and make this work with him. Is that true? Yes. But you also got big trust problems, right? Yes. That's not intended as a criticism. You understand that, right? I understand. Because you have a reason to have trust problems. Fair? Yes. The fact he's got this other phone is a big source of conflict. Is that right? Yes. It was something you didn't like, right? Yes. Because of your trust issues that you legitimately had. Yes. And you made it clear to him you weren't thrilled with that other phone, right? Yes. Um, now, we've had the opportunity over two years to talk about this phone a lot, is that right? Yes. This, this second phone, his phone. It was a while after I knew you before you told me that you'd been checking in his phone, isn't that right? Yes. You're, you were really embarrassed about that fact, isn't that true? Yes. In fact, you're, even now, you're kind of ashamed that you were spying on him, right? Yes. And uh, we had to get to know you before you would admit that to us, right? Yes. Um, and you don't like, even now, that you have done that, do you? No. Okay. 
So it's pretty embarrassing to spy on your husband, right? Yes. It's even more embarrassing for you that you felt like you had to, isn't it? Yes. Okay. But the reality is you were doing that, right? Yes. And the reality is, aside from checking into this phone on the sly, you were making it a big deal all the time with him that you didn't like that phone, right? Yes. And you were making it a big deal that there was no reason he shouldn't have those bills where you could see them, right? I don't know if I ever talked to him about it. Okay. But you did make it clear you'd like to know what was on that phone. You just didn't want him to know you were actually, and I'm not trying to be mean, sneaking around checking up on him, right? Yes. Okay. Um, can I have one second, Judge? I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Thank you. We have nothing further. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Rubin, sign other questions for the witness? Nothing else on this issue, Your Honor. We would ask to keep her under subpoena for some other issues later in the week. All right. Thank you. You're still under subpoena, but free to go at this point. Thank if you'll you. just stay in touch with the lawyers. Thank you so much. Thank you. The people's next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. The people call Patrick Hupke to the stand. Feel free to stretch if anybody wishes. Thank you. Sir, if you'll come up this way, I need to give you an oath before you testify, and if you'll be careful, this black cord that we have on the floor. Yes, Thank you. And then if you'd raise your right hand whenever you're ready. Do you solemnly swear or affirm under penalty of perjury the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you, sir. If you have a seat in that green chair by the microphone, please. Thank you. And you can proceed whenever you're ready, Mr. Rubenstein. Thank Th you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, please tell the jury your full name and spell your last name. Patrick Ryan Hupke, H-U-P-K-E. And you were scheduled to come in and testify yesterday, but you had the stomach flu, right? Yes. Sir. Feeling, feeling better today? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> this will be short, sir. Um, can you tell the jury how you're currently employed? Uh, with CC uh, Traffic Control. And what about in 2000, June of 2007? was working for a uh, assembly factory there on 24 Road. Did you often go into the area of G Road and 23 Road around that time? Not often, but I, I, have, I have. Specifically, do you recall on June 28th of 2007 that you were in that area? Yes. Were you trying to get somewhere in that area? Yes. Was there a traffic accident? Yes. Do you recall at what time you were over there? Um, it was on my lunch. And I'm not sure what the shift um, on that time was. was if you told law, did you, did you talk to law enforcement back then? Yeah. Do you recall why you ended up talking to law enforcement? Um, just if I saw something out of the ordinary, they said. Did you respond to yeah, I, something that? Yeah. And do you recall telling them that you were there at 9 p.m. on June 28, 2007? I, I know it was probably my lunch break. Is that around the time of your lunch break? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, may I approach, Your Honor? Yes, sir. I'm going to show you what's marked People's Exhibit 203, and I've previously shown this to Defense Counsel. Yes, sir. Does that have your handwriting on it, sir? Yeah, it does. And what does your handwriting say? 9 p.m. June 28th. Okay. And was that something you wrote on there during a previous hearing in this case? Uh, yes. Okay. And was that, at that time, did you have a better memory of, of what time you had been in that area? That was just this summer, wasn't it? That was, no, I don't. It's the same re recollection I have. Okay. 
was that, did you write that as being an accurate time of when you were in that area? It was, yes. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, I'd move to admit People's Exhibit 203. Do you have an objection, Ms. Smith? No. People's 203 is admitted. Um, what do you recall about, about the accident? Uh, just that traffic was being diverted. I think it was a fatality. Okay. So they were closing that intersection. So in that uh, industrial park, they were diverting people off from different side roads. And does that map have a yellow dot on it? Yes, it does. And is that yellow dot in the area of where the accident was, that traffic was being diverted around? Yes. Okay. And so your memory is at that date and time, yes. traffic was still being diverted? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I have no further questions for the witness, Your Honor. Mr. Coleman. Any cross examination, or I'm sorry, Ms. Smith, any cross examination? You can proceed whenever you're ready. Thanks. Mr. Hupke, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a little bit confused. What do you remember seeing in that area? Well, there was a traffic accident at that intersection, and where I was working was just uh, north of that intersection. So to get to and from work there, we had to get diverted on side roads. Okay, and then did, and you responded to a tip line about whether or not you'd seen anything suspicious mm -hmm. in the area of that accident, mm -hmm. right? Yes. That, okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay, and then what do you remember seeing suspicious in that area? Um, that there was this one vehicle off on a dead-end dirt road off in the brush. He looked like he was rummaging through his truck. Okay. And then what do you remember about that truck? It was just a white Ford. Okay. I get, okay. So that's what I just wanted to clarify with you, Mr. Huffke, is what you remembered... What, what, once you got this tip report, what triggered your memory, it triggered your memory about this white truck, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And you thought that this white truck was worth reporting to law enforcement? Yes. Okay. So you responded to the tip line, gave them this information? Yes. Okay. Now, you know a thing or two about trucks, right? Yes. Okay. So you can tell the difference between a Ford truck and a Dodge truck? Yes. And you know you can recognize the size of the truck. Yes. Okay. So, for example, you can tell the difference between a half ton, a three-quarter ton, or a one ton. Yes. Okay. And the truck that you saw that raised your suspicions that you thought was worth telling law enforcement about was a Ford truck. Yes. Not a Dodge. Correct. Okay. And it was probably a three-quarter ton? Yes. And did you say an F-250? Yes. I have nothing else. Thank you. Mr. Rubenstein, redirect. Where exactly was that truck? You said it was pulled off somewhere? Yes. It was uh, north of whatever G Road or wherever that, where the accident was. Um, just before you get to 24 Road, just north of that area. Do you recall being back in that area around 945 at all, or 10, between 945 and 1010? I just know it was uh, an hour lunch break, and I w was returning back to work. OK, so you don't have any idea of no. how, how long that truck was there? No. OK, and did you see that you said somebody was rummaging inside of it? Yes. Did you see what that person looked like? Um, just uh, about my height and a uh, white person. Um, looked like he had a uh, Western wear on. Okay, thank you, no further mm -hmm. questions. Ms. Smith, three cross. Yes, thank you. You're welcome.
Mr. Hupke, I just want to clarify what you mean by Western wear. Is that like a cowboy hat uh, that you could see? Uh, probably a denim shirt with a, his shirt tucked in and, and Levi jeans and uh, uh, boots, saddle boots, cowboy boots, yeah. Oh, okay, so this person was outside of their truck. Mm -hmm. It Was that a yes? Yes. Okay, and you could tell they were wearing cowboy boots and blue jeans and what you would describe as western wear. Yes. Okay, and how tall are you, sir? I'm 5'11". Okay, thank you very mm -hmm. much. Mr. Rubenstein, no other questions? Your Honor, he can be released from subpoena. Any objection, Ms. Smith? None at all. All right, thank you. Our release from your subpoena, sir. Thank okay, you. Thank you. to go. The people's next witness. Your Honor, the people would call Robert Beagley to the stand, please. please. Feel free to stretch if anybody wishes. Thanks. <laughs> Morning, sir. You'll just be careful of this black cord that we have on the walkway there. Do you solemnly swear or affirm under penalty of perjury the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. So if you can have a seat in the green chair, please. You can proceed whenever you're ready, Mr. Wade. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, would you state your name and spell your last name for the record, please? Robert Beagley, B-E-A-G-L-E-Y. -E and uh, where do you work? Mesa County Sheriff's Department. Uh, how long have you worked for the Mesa County Sheriff's Department? 20 years. And what's your rank with the Mesa County Sheriff's Office? Sergeant. What duties have you had over the time you've worked there? Start, started in the jail. I had four years of that. Come out to the street, worked the street. Got promoted to corporal, went to the street crimes unit as a corporal. I got promoted uh, off street crimes as a sergeant. Uh, went to patrol, ran a patrol team. And now uh, I'm a sergeant still over, but now over street crimes again. And I take it you were working at the sheriff's office then in March of 2011? Uh, yes, I was. At that point, did you get involved in the investigation of the, uh, of the case against Lester Jones and the disappearance of Paige Brookfeld? Yes, I did. How did you become involved? I was requested by my supervisor to <clears throat> drive from uh, 3072 Hill Avenue. That's Lester Jones's residence. Uh, I was uh, directed to drive from there to Lester Jones's place of employment, uh, Bob Scott RV, uh, 2302 uh, Grand Park uh, Drive. And I was directed to take uh, three alternate routes um, set the odometer, set the time, and do those three routes. And did you drive three separate routes? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, and I'd like to show you, Your Honor, may I approach? Yes, you may. Thank you. I'd like to show you what's been marked as People's Exhibit 208. Does that depict one of the routes that you uh, that you drove as a result of this request? Uh, yes, sir. In <clears throat> order of the routes that I took from the report that I wrote, this will be route number one. Okay. And with respect to route number one, can you tell us where you, well, first of all, is that an accurate depiction of the route that you took? Yes, it is. Okay. I offer People's Exhibit 208. And, and for the record, I've shown that to the defense. Do you have any objection, Mr. Colvin? No, sir. People's 208 is admitted. And, Your Honor, may we publish that? Is there any objection? Yes, sir. All right, that's fine. You can publish 208 to our jury. Thank you. It's going to show up on the TV behind you, and I'll have you, if at that point, talk about it, please. Thank you very much. 
So, Sergeant, can you uh, describe what we're looking at there um, on People's 208? <clears throat> this will be route number one. The right here is Lester Jones's residence where we started, 3072 Hill. This will be the ending location. This, <clears throat> this route here, am I good to continue explaining? Yes, if you would describe kind of where you went on the route, just so we kind of can orient ourselves on, the, on where we are. From <clears throat> Lester's residence, I went north on 30 and 3 quarter up to E Road. Went left on E Road westbound down to 30. Took 30 Road up to where 30 Road touches into I-70B. Took I-70B all the way down into town, into Grand Junction, onto 1st Street. Took 1st Street north, out to where it connects into Highway 6 and 50. Took 6 and 50 all the way to 23 Road. 23 Road straight up. Bob Scott's is on the intersection of 23 Road and Grand Park Drive. Now, you indicated that you set your odometer so you were determining the distance, and did you also keep track of the time it took you to do that? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. And with respect to that route, what was the distance and what was the time? Am I good to look back at my report? It, it, would that refresh your recollection? Yes, it would. Yes. That route was 9.8 miles, took 19 minutes. Okay. Now you also had indicated earlier that you took several different routes and kind of an, to try to get an idea of some of the possible routes from the, the house to, to the workplace? Yes, I did. Okay. And Your Honor, may I approach? Yes, sir. Thank you. You're now looking at what has been marked as People's Exhibit 209. Can you tell me what that is? <clears throat> this is the second route from Lester Jones's residence to his place of employment. And is that a map of the second route? Yes, it is. Is that an accurate depiction of route number two? Yes, it is. Your Honor, I'd offer People's Exhibit 209. Any objection to People's 209? No, no objection. All right, thank you. People's Exhibit 209 is admitted. Thanks. And if we could publish that, please, Your Honor. Any objection? No, sir. All right, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, Sergeant, we're now looking at uh, up on the screen at uh, People's Exhibit 209. Uh, can you describe, as you did the, la the first time, um, what, you, what route you took on that? Yes, I can. On this one, <clears throat> starting again at 30 and 3 quarters, near Lester Jones's residence going straight uh, north up to E Road, west on E Road. Uh, e Road makes a small turn as it goes into 30 Road. Made a right hand turn on 30 Road going north up to I-70B. I-70B comes across, takes a small uh, turn onto North Avenue. Took North Avenue on this route all the way down to its end beyond First Street where North Avenue connects into 6 and 50. Took this route again all the way out to 23, 23 north up to the intersection of Bob Scott. And did you do the same thing in terms of keeping track of that with your odometer and also the amount of time it took you? Uh, yes, I did. And uh, can you tell us, please, what, what distance it was and how much time it took? Uh, this route was uh, 9.0 miles, took 22 minutes. Okay. Thank you. Now, you indicated that you did three routes, so, Your Honor, if I could approach. Yes, you may. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> if the record could reflect. Thank you.
Any objection? No, sir. People's Exhibit 210 is admitted. And if we could publish that, please. Any objection? No, sir. All right. You can publish 210. Thank you. And, sir, if you would describe what we're looking at when we're looking at People's Exhibit 210. Uh, 210, I started again at Mr. Uh, uh, Lester Jones's residence, went north on 30 and 3 quarters, made a left-hand turn, went westbound on E Road, down to 30 Road. This time on 30 Road, I took 30 Road all the way north to Patterson, made a left-hand turn, went westbound on Patterson, took Patterson all the way out to 24 Road, uh, right here at this location, 24 Road makes a small turn around some businesses, continues out, and it also connects to Highway 6 and 50. Uh, from here, I took 6 and 50 up to 23, 23 Road north to Bob Scott. Okay. And did you keep track of the time and distance on that route? <coughs> yes, I did. And, and what were those? Uh, 9.8 miles, 20 minutes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, I don't have any. If I could have just a moment. Just yes, sir. Um, when you when you drove the routes that you've just described to us, did you um, drive them at a certain time of day? I did. Uh, the first route I started at 1:25 p.m. Second route was 2:07 p.m. and the third route was 3:15 p.m. And, and why did you pick uh, the different time? Uh, well, were those all done consecutively the same day, or did you do those on separate days? They were all done the same day. Okay. Was there a reason why you just did them one after another at that time of day? There was, <clears throat> there was nothing specific for that time of the day, and one after another was just, it was a convenience thing. I had that time, and I just continued and got those three done at that time. Okay, thank you. If I have one more. Yes, sir. And um, can, you're familiar, are you familiar with that area during the course of your duties? Yes, I am. Is, uh, what was the traffic like that day as opposed, or during those course of those routes? In the, in the reports I wrote <clears throat> it, from the first route um, I hit, uh, the traffic at that time was moderate. Uh, second route, uh, the traffic was picking up. I was getting a little bit heavier amounts of traffic. And then the third route, uh, it, I hit a heavier mount uh, than the previous two routes. Okay. Okay. And are are you familiar? Um, you're, you're familiar with the community. Do you have you worked different shifts during during the course of your? Duty? Yes, I have. Um, does traffic thin out later in the day? Absolutely. Um, and in fact, in the evenings, um, would you say that traffic is similar to what you saw, or or is it much thinner than that? significantly less. Okay, thank you. I don't have anything else, Judge. Mr. Colvin, cross-examination. Can I approach the witness to the grant Yes, sir, thank you. Yes, thank you. That's, that's fine. Uh, where's G Road on that map? G Road? Yes, sir. G Road will be right here. Okay. You didn't time it on G Road, right? No, I did not. I mean, the truth of the matter is there's about a bunch of possible ways to get from his house to um the his place of employment right the several times that uh <clears throat> in my assignment on street crimes that i had followed mr jones to and from work from his residence to bob scott those were the three primary routes okay so 
but that kind of opens up a couple of things. So first off, um, you do this drive test stuff um, in March of 2011. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, now, you had referenced the fact that you'd followed him previously. Is that right? Yes, sir. By following him previously, what we're talking about here is that Mace County Sheriff's Department had him under surveillance previously. Is that correct? There were a few times that we did follow him, yes, sir. Just a few times? There was a whole bunch of times, wasn't there, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, in fact, you participated as part of a unit of Mesa County Sheriff's Department employees that surveilled him in 2007. Is that right? 2007. Sir, I don't recall what my involvement was with Mr. Jones in 2007. Okay, well, Sergeant Lotka, well, who was Sergeant Lotka? Sergeant Lotka was the sergeant over street crimes unit. He was the supervisor. I was the corporal under him. Okay, so if Sergeant Lotka wrote a report saying that you were participating as part of a team surveilling him back in uh, July 19th, 2007, do you have any reason to doubt that? I was out of the country in July. Really? Of that, yes, sir. And so I don't, and it was in July of that year, and I don't recall the dates. So if, if he specifically has me listed, yes, sir, I was there. Okay. I mean, it'd be pretty silly for him to name you as part of the team if you weren't there, right? I'd expect that, yes, sir. Okay. Um, and when I'm talking about teams, I'm talking about a whole lot of Sheriff's Department resources involved in surveilling that man, right? At that time, our team was five in Lodka. Your team was uh, five, five in Sergeant Lodka, so six total. Okay, five employees, five law enforcement officers, right? Yes, sir. Plus the sergeant. Yes, sir. Okay, so the team consisted of six deputies for the Mesa County Sheriff's Department surveilling him, right? Yes, sir. And that went on for not a day, not even a week. That went on for over a month, right? If this is in 2007? Yes, sir. I do not know. Okay. Uh, now, you know more about the 2011 surveillance, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Because not only was he surveilled in 2007, for a period of time you don't know, but you know that there's a team of six folks involved in it back then, right? Yes, sir. What were the team involved in 2011? 2011, I believe our staff room is at the same, same six. Okay. And you surveilled him for over a month in 2011, right? It was an extended period of time, and I don't know how long, sir. Okay. And when we're talking about surveil, what we're talking about is law enforcement agents would be parked in unmarked police cars and you would follow him wherever he went when he left his house right yes sir and if he's in his house watching tv or whatever you guys are sitting outside there and you're in marked police cars waiting for something to happen taking taking notes on who comes and goes but basically waiting for something to happen right yes sir okay That's a whole lot of time and resources that was expended by the Mace County Sheriff's Department watching this man. Would you agree? Yes, sir. Um, and I guess what you got out of that was you got out different ways he goes to work, right? <clears throat> From my involvement? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, how many times did you follow him to work? Boy, I, I really don't know, sir. Okay. I, several. How many times did you follow him back from work? Do you know that? Probably just as many times as we followed him to, we followed him from. Okay. And he wouldn't always take the same way back that he, the, the same way back to home that he went going to work, would he? He'd change up, right? He'd stop at different places, yes, sir. Okay. Sometimes he'd stop um, for, you know, on the way for a cup of coffee, right? 
I hit stop for whatever yeah. yesterday. Wait, stop at a restaurant. Who knows what he's doing inside, right? Yes, sir. Uh, a lot of times coming back, he would stop at a club he frequented in the evenings, correct? Yes, sir. In fact, that club was the al -Anon Club. Is that right? Yes, sir. And that was a routine deal coming home. He'd go to the al -Anon Club for a while, right? Yes, it was. Okay. But he didn't go there on the way to work, right? No. Okay. So his route necessarily would change from morning to evening, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you didn't run any of these tests, uh, including a stop at al -Anon, right? No, we did not. Okay. Um, and you certainly didn't run any of these tests building in a stop at, you know, to get a cup of coffee, right? No, we did not. You didn't build in uh, a stop to get gas, did you? No, we did not. Okay. Basically, what you're doing is assuming traffic is moderate to getting heavier, no stops, uh, no reason to diverge from this path. This is how long it took, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Now, you, when you do these tests, you, you did them all the same day, right? Yes, sir. But um, the times between how long it takes you to start the new test are significantly different test to test, right? Uh, yes, sir. I've noticed that uh, there was some time between test uh, two and test three. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and we, we talked about this previously when you testified at a different hearing, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and so between test one and test two, it took you 42 minutes to get back to start the second one, right? Go, if it would refresh your recollection, please do. Yes, sir. Okay. And then between two and three, uh, it took you, what, an hour and eight minutes to get back and start that third test run, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And when we testified before, you explained you were doing this in the midst of your normal duties, right? Yes, sir. And so you may have had something else you had to go do temporarily. For all you know, you had to stop and run an errand, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so if we take these drive tests uh, or these drive times, um, what we're not counting here is anything that caused a delay of any type, right? I believe in the report. Uh, on the first route and second route, I noted um, some construction. Um, no construction and uh, nothing that slowed down the route number three. Okay. I, I, guess, I guess that's not really what I'm asking you. The, the routes you have talked about and the routes that are put on these maps the jury's looked at are drive times that are direct, no stops, nothing else going on. The goal is get from point A to point B um, within reasonable speed limits but as quick as possible, right? Yes, sir. But your experience in doing this is that lots of things can cause delays, right? Yes, sir. And, and we know for a fact every time you drove back from Bob Scott to the house, it took you a lot longer than 19 minutes or 20 minutes or 22 minutes, right? No, that's not accurate. Well, it took 48 minutes between one and two, and it took an hour and eight minutes between two and three, sir. Well, the route from one to two, uh -huh. and you're referencing 40 some minutes, that is the time to get there and the time to get back. And that's a straight route, their straight route back, yes, sir. 48 minutes, right? Yes, sir. 19 minutes one way, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So 19 minutes plus 19 minutes is 38, right? Isn't that my math? Yes, sir. So that means it took you 10 more minutes to get back, then go. Okay. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. So it takes, I mean, I'll, I'm sorry, you said significant. I, yeah. Okay. Maybe we're talking semantics. It, it takes 28 minutes to get back, eight, 19 minutes to get there, right? Okay. Okay. Admittedly, 10 minutes isn't a really, really long time 
But it's a heck of a difference if 19, 20, and 22 is what we're trying to establish. Would you agree? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and like he said, maybe that was long enough for you to stop and get a pop, right? I, I don't recall what the time delay was between those trips. Okay. Um, I guess the other thing I want to be clear on is when you're timing this, you're just timing door to door, right? In other words, if I leave the house at this time, this is the time I get to Bob Scott RV, right? Yes, sir. Now, what you're not timing here is the length of time it would take if Mr. Jones was doing something at Bob Scott RV, right? Yes, sir. In other words, if, hypothetically, Mr. Jones was going into Bob Scott RV, grabbing a can of gas, going to set cars on fire, doing all that other stuff, you didn't time any of that, right? Not at all. Okay. So these times really don't tell us anything about how long it would have taken Mr. Jones to do something bad if that's what happened. Would you agree? Yes, sir. Okay. Nothing further. Thank you very much. Mr. Wade, other questions for the witness? Yes, sir. Sure. Okay, you can proceed when you're ready. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Well, just to clarify, uh, Sergeant Beagley, so you did these three routes, and the purpose of doing the three routes was to get a determination of the time from the start time at Lester Jones to the stop time at, at Bob Scott RVs. Yes, sir. Okay. And you indicated that there was kind of a delay in between these trips. Was it your intention to try and, and figure out how long it took then to do from Bob Scott back? Or was it just simply that you made your way back to the start place again and then made a second trip? The, the direction I was given and my intent for the, for the routes was just to Bob Scott's, not to time the return trip. Okay, so it wasn't your intent to, to, to time the entire trip to and from? Yes, sir. Okay. And there were some things when you were noting the times in your report, um, there were some things that delayed you in getting back to the start, for instance, for, for Route 2 and then again for Route 3. Yes, sir. Those included things that were part of your duties that you were you know, doing regular other other things besides these these tasks yes sir and so um, the delay in getting back you, you weren't you weren't trying to get back from Bob Scott to Lester Jones's residence the, the quickest you could no not as I had done going to Bob Scott okay and but that was your intent in, in doing it the opposite direction yes sir Now, you said that you didn't go up to G Road. Um, have you been on G Road? For the purpose of this case? Yeah. Not at all. Have you, have you been on G Road before? Have you traveled G Road? Yes, sir. A um, lot of stop signs on G Road? There, there are several stop signs on G Road. Okay. And during the course of your surveillance of Mr. Jones, you, you didn't note that he actually took that route to get to work? No, I do not recall uh, Mr. Jones ever taking that route. Okay. So you did these routes during the day. Yes, sir. You were trying to determine how, uh, how far and how fast from Lester Jones' residence to Bob Scott RV. Yes, sir. Okay. The traffic that you described earlier, you described rather heavy or you know, moderate to sometimes heavy traffic, and you said, I believe, that there were a couple of construction delays when you did this in 2011? Yes, sir. And still, um, during, with all of that, it took you, um, again, what were the times for each route? This route here, uh, I believe, was 19 minutes. This route here, 22 minutes. And this route here, 20. So all around 20 minutes or so from, yes, sir. from Lester Jones residence to Bob Scott RV. Yes, sir. Okay. I don't have anything else. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you.
Nothing further. Thank you. I did want to make a record. Uh, we don't have 210 up on the screen any further, but uh, G Road is not indicated on Exhibit 210, and the witness referred to G Road. Uh, so just for the record, G Road, uh, E Road, and H Road are both indicated on the exhibit. The next darker line up from E Road is Patterson, and then the next darker gray line above that is G Road, is what the witness identified it as being, and then next above that is the darker gray line, which is H Road. Thank you. Anything else? No, no sir. Is he released from his subpoena or still under subpoena? He can be released, John. Any objection, Mr. Colvin? No, sir. You're released from your subpoena, sir. Thank you. Is this a good time for our mid-morning break? That's or? just what we were discussing. All right, right thank you. We'll take a short break, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll see you back shortly. Uh, please remember all the instructions for the recesses. Thank you. Please rise for our jury. Okay, thank you. I'll see you back at 1043. Thank you, we're in recess.